This is a video about the three most broadly covered topics within the body of Christian prophecy in 2018. And really not just 2018, but in the last three decades, all of these things are now converging in importance to pointing like a giant arrow to the time we are in right now. This is the man from Modesto, and these are the three topics. First of all, the war you now see in Ukraine is not about Russia versus Ukraine. It is a part of the work of the New World Order to create a world war and then from the ashes, like a phoenix, raise up a new world order with a one world government. Second, that in this time, they are setting up a one world religion. There is a lot of evidence to support this. Again, I'm gonna cover that later. Next, and I've heard so many Christians, independent Christians, Christians who've had a uh, multi-year, a long span of prophecy on YouTube and on the internet, evangelism all over the world through the World Wide Web, and also independent Christians, just individuals coming forward. Maybe they just have one video and it's a warning from God. And part of that warning is you need to prepare. We need to prepare. So to support this idea, I'm going to give you a list from Ken Peters, and I'm also going to share with you three prayers that the Holy Spirit gave me. So now let's get into this. The first thing is that this war where Russia has invaded Ukraine, this is not a, something that just happened because the Yanukovych went out of power. As I've explained in my other videos, the whole world is theater. What you see in the news is scripted in order to deceive you so that you will go along with things, that you will behave in a certain way. So people have asked me, well, Russia is strong enough to take over Ukraine. So if they really wanted to take over Ukraine, why haven't they done it yet? because there's a timeline. All these things are scheduled. They have agendas, and the other thing is is that they will also be taking a lot of polls, and they won't move forward in the ordered events of their agenda unless they have polling which shows that the people believe and think the way they want. For example, years ago when I lived in Philadelphia, as the Bosnia-Herzegovina war was ramping up, they had Muslims killing Christians and Muslims killing Muslims, and the New York Times would run articles blaming one side or the other. And then you could also find in other places that they were taking polls to find out, you know, which side did you support? And I think I remember people telling me that they had actually received a phone call and someone was asking them all about the war. And they came and they said, don't you think that's interesting? And I said, yes, I do. They're taking polls because the United States has already determined, the world has already determined that they wanted to go into Bosnia-Herzegovina, but they were going to do it in support of whichever side had the most support publicly. And so they would run articles, you know, blaming one side, and then they would take a poll, like, did you, did you go for that? You know, did you fall for that? So when they finally got more favor for one side, then they went in and said, well, we're gonna, you know, create peace here, and we're gonna support this group. So it's the kind of thing they did. So they're really just trying to find their best marketing. They want to manipulate you psychologically. A lot of this is done psychologically so that your conscious mind doesn't understand you're being deceived, manipulated, and controlled. Uh, George Orwell's 1984 is in place. Maybe you think, well, 84 came and went. It's not. No, it's totally in place. But it is a stealth psychological system. And it started long ago with Pavlov's dogs, how to do classical conditioning. I have an excellent, excellent uh, article on hub pages called Classical Conditioning in Movies, Mind Control. You can go look that up and I'll just, there's hundreds of examples there. It will blow your mind if you've never understood how they control you, manipulate you. So <clears throat> in fact, later in this video, I'm gonna give you an example. Go see that, that article that I prepared and wrote because uh, later I'm gonna give you an example which will be supported by that page. This Ukraine is about the new world order. Earlier I posted a dream, the Holy Spirit warned me that they were going to come and there was gonna be this crescent moon that was going to be sieging on Kiev. And then in the next part of the dream, I saw a crescent moon sieging on the city of Los Angeles. Why? Because this objective of taking Ukraine is to gain access to Israel. This, this world war that they want to create in order to cause and build up the new world order, which you know uh, George, w, George Bush Sr. used to talk about the new world order, and you'll see in movies at the end, they'll often have some kind of a line that says something about a new order or a new world. They'll say these things, we're gonna create a world order different than the one. You know, they will just take the three words and combine them in different ways and just show two of the words. But what they're always talking about is the new world order. That's the Latin on the dollar bill, you know, novus ordum seclorum. That's what it means, new world order. Some of what I just talked about, 
uh, this plan to attack Israel. You can read about that in a prophecy called the Azal Mina Prophecy, which was given to Philip Barnett, a missionary here in Kiev uh, many years ago. I think he posted 2003 or maybe 2007. And he, the first part of that prophetic vision showed that Russia would invade Eastern Ukraine. Recently, just last week, I had a whole series of dreams through the night and uh, just two snippets here. Uh, there's a man who's been out of contact with the public and he comes in and he meets some other men and he's getting news. And this is something I've seen before in dreams that, that news and information during the end time uh, happens when people meet each other and sit down at a campfire or sit around maybe a, a small meal and just trade what they know. And there's no internet, there's no telephone calls, there's no newspaper being published. And this is how people share information. And sometimes one group who's fighting in an area will just dispatch a man to just cross the United States and give reports. This is how the battle, this is how the fighting is going in Atlanta. This is how the fighting is going in Washington, D.C. And they will just travel and meet other groups, you know, individual fighting militias in the central parts of, of the United States and tell them, you know, this is what is happening. This is so in this dream, I see a man, he's asking, and he's asking about different cities. They're saying that city was nuked, that city was uh, fell. And he says, what about Philadelphia? And he, and he says, the guy says twice, Philadelphia is gone, Philadelphia is gone. And that's what he says. There was no vision, I didn't see anything. So the guy could be exaggerating, but that's a conversation that happens somewhere uh, in the end time fighting within North America. So the next part of that dream is I hear some people speaking in Russia and they say that the city of Kherson has been nuked. Now, even though I live in Ukraine, for some reason, I. Because both city names start with an X, I always confuse, you know, geographically speaking, uh, Kherson as being situated where Kharkov is situated, which is kind of north uh, east from Kiev. So, I, I, but I looked it up and I said, well, where is Kherson? Well, Kherson is just immediately north and a bit west from the occupied Crimean Peninsula. And it also is a city on the east side of the mouth of the Dnieper River. So. Again, back to this Azov Mina prophecy, they want to move the Belarus army down through the Dnieper River in order to attack Israel. And this port then becomes a place where you might expect them to have located a large defense network so that the river cannot be attacked, so that someone else couldn't take over the mouth of the river and then prevent this army from moving. But so Kherson, the city, gets nuked. That was something that I just saw this week in a dream. To reiterate, this whole war you're seeing in Ukraine, this is something the Holy Spirit has talked to me a lot about, and I've seen other people. There are a lot of prophecies in the local Christian community here. And unfortunately, uh, I think, because I've never seen anything about this, but they believe there, there have been a lot of prophecies about this. And again, I'm wanting to iterate that this is, I, I don't believe this is true, that some other thing will happen and this Russian army will be drawn away. I, I don't see that. What I see is that the Russian army is gonna come in. So this is the thing, you have to know God directly. You must know God directly. You can't just be listening to everyone. If you have no rhema word, if you're not hearing from God, you gotta ask yourself, you gotta go and read the book of Matthew. You know, I never knew you. That's when, they, when Jesus rejects them, they say, we did everything for you. We prophesied, we had the soup kitchen, you know, we built a, a church and you know, we did everything in your name. And Jesus is like, I never knew you, get out. Those people, for some reason, they believe it. They believed that they were serving Jesus, but they weren't. If you don't know the word of God, and if what you think is the word of God is failing consistently, because listen, even there are some psychics that are like, you know, recorded as being up to 40 and 60% accurate. So if you're missing 40 to 60%, you know, the, the complement of those ratios, then you probably, you may not be hearing from God. You know, it seems really, really unlikely. Now, if people are twisting your words and stuff, kind of this Leviathan spirit, comes against the people in the body of Christ serving the kingdom of God, that's a natural thing and that's fully expected. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about you're in a church where most of their prophecy is failing. For example, in Bethel Reading, they have this school of signs and wonders. If, if, if even just the name of that school is not a warning for you, you should, you need to start reading the scripture. But anyway, uh, they're saying, oh, we think like 5%, 10% of these prophecies are accurate. They are raising up people to be prophets and they're like missing 95% way worse than the psychics? Come on. So this leads me into uh, the next thing, which is the establishment of a universal church. Now, something this is something I recently, I've just had two, again, again, all the old prophecy is all converging on right now. So recently I noticed that two 
prophetic words the Holy Spirit gave me were fulfilled, and the culprit, the evil that was forewarned, traces back to this group called the NAR, which is now called the INC, which I think means uh, the Independent Something Charismatics, Network Charismatics, right? So their goal is to go out and infiltrate society, you know, through networking, and then get into government and change things. And the warning the Holy Spirit gave me was that evil would be allowed because the Satanists would creep into leadership within the church and apparently also within society and then start saying, oh no, these laws we can pass. Well, of course it's within government because the church doesn't typically pass laws. And then their colleagues within this network charismatics, they're going to be saying within the church, no, 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 this is okay. It's not evil. We can allow that. And this is, you know, one of the very first dreams I had as a new Christian, the Holy Spirit showed me that that is one of the ways Satan's work. And he showed me a story from only a few hundred years after Christ that Satanists were going out to alter stories about what Jesus had done and that they would send people in secret into groups. And even the people who were sent didn't know about the others who were also serving that agenda. And that one of the tools they used was to simply say, no, no, it was always like that. This is the way the story has always been told. You're remembering wrong. So they just confuse people. And by collaborating amongst themselves as seemingly independent sources, but really all tracing back to the satanic secret societies, they're duping people by simply insisting. You know, it goes back to this, I think his name was uh, Gertels, Goebbels, the, the Nazi propagandist. If you just say it enough times and say it loud enough, people will believe it. It's the same satanic tactic that has been around for centuries. So this false religion, here are some examples. So I just mentioned, I have two fulfilled prof prophecies. Uh, one of these is about two new spirits would rise up. Uh, amazing the way I found out that that was fulfilled. Basically, this guy posted an, agenda, an article about that just described everything that the Holy Spirit showed me would happen. Like the way it laid out on the map, everything was parallel. And basically, the, those spirits that are going to be increasing dramatically are called lust of self and desire to be worshipped. This is something that's going to be happening in the end times. People will worship other men. And years ago, I heard someone say that, he, that God showed him, the Holy Spirit showed him, uh, what Daniel had sealed up, that part of it was that men would worship other men. And there were many confirmations that about the time that the Holy Spirit was teaching me that that was going to be coming. So this was something that the uh, Holy Spirit warned me about. The other one was called Deception in the Church Unleashes Evil, and that's the one I basically covered a moment ago. Now, the other thing that I want you to show, and this is really amazing, I'm going to just list these just straight. All these world leaders, Protestant leaders, denominational leaders, are going now and meeting with the Pope. And I believe that in secret, you know, they're just kind of, you know, kissing the ring, bending the knee, you know, uh, making an oath of fealty, whatever it is they're doing, they're aligning themselves with the coming one world church, the new universal church. So who are these people? Okay, first of all, Ulf Ekman. And I'm gonna elaborate on this one a little bit. Years ago, when I first met my wife, so this was 14 years ago, she had these books from Ulf Ekman, from this Livets Ord church, a big, um, a big evangelizing church located in Sweden. Years later, I started remembering that I didn't like this guy. And so I went and I looked, I did a little bit of research, and I quickly found that he was being accused of being a secret Knight Templar. Some photos came out of him in the Templar uniform, and some people who visited his house took pictures of a little statue of the Virgin Mary, you know, in his backyard. You know, something that Catholics burn candles to and practice basically what is, except in name, idol worship. You know, something that God does not like. God wants you to worship him directly, not to a stone statuette. Eventually, the church called him out on it. They said, all right, you're out. You know, and he asked, he said, well, just give me one hour, you know, to speak to the church. So they assumed it was to say goodbye. But no, what he does is he used the hour to basically pitch Roman Catholicism and justify Roman Catholicism. And you know what? The church lost some people. Some members went out and followed Ulf Ekman and went to the Roman Catholic Church. So this is so this is one example, right? People are moving toward the Roman Catholic Church. But if you're smart and you see that your leaders are doing this, you can get rid of them. There's a board, right? There's a committee. You need to take over the board with God-believing Christians. And you need to kick out the Satanists who have crept in, the wolves who have crept in unaware. You need to identify them by their actions, by what they promote. And if you don't know the Bible, you won't be able to do that. You need to know God, you need to know the Bible, and you can call these people out, get them out of your church hierarchy so that you can continue to follow God. So now, uh, 
Chris Valaton, again, this is the NAR, the INC, these people I just talked about previously. This guy's like number two, you know, the disciple who's like twice the son of Satan as yourself that these wicked men go out and find. So you got Chris Valaton, he went out and met with the Pope. Uh, Mike Bickle, another NAR guy. Uh, Rick Warren also met with the Pope and he said he's our Pope. You know, he said, this is our Pope. He's not the Roman Catholics Pope. No, people, Rome is loaded up with Satanists. It's a major global headquarters site for the Satanists. A lot of satanic activity comes out of there. For example, you know them by their works. You know them by their fruit. A Jesuit priest named Frederick Engels went out and taught a man named Karl Marx all about the satanic kind of government that they wanted, and they just called it communism. And what did communism produce? Hundreds of millions of deaths. That's what it produced. It spread to China, where again, hundreds of millions of deaths. It went into Cambodia, hundreds of millions of deaths. It got into North Korea. What's happening there? All kinds of persecution of Christ. It shows that it is an antichrist spirit, a Luciferian, satanic, uh, evil spirit. That's what's behind communism. And where does it trace its roots back to? To Rome. People who are going to Rome are selling you out to the devil's universal church that he wants to establish. So that's something we all can pray against. Next, uh, Episcopal leaders from all over the United States. And even in, in shows, they even promote ideas. There's a show, uh, it's about aliens invade, but there's a girl named Lourdes. And in one of the early scenes, Lourdes, where have you been? Oh, I wanted to pray. You know, I'm a Catholic, but you know, I found an Episcopalian church, so I prayed there. It's essentially the same. So two major deceptions. One, you can only pray in a church, total hogwash. And two, she's letting all the Episcopalians know to feed into their mind, even if they don't remember, that's where they got the idea from, three to six months later, and they've done polls on this kind of a thing after movies, they find out that no matter how bad the information is, a majority of people will believe it as truth. Even if they believed a different truth previously, they will replace their truth with deception that was simply dialogue in a piece of fictional theater. And they knew it was fiction when they watched it, but later, their mind fails to separate it and they replace their true beliefs with garbage that they heard in dialogue. And that's why Hollywood is a tool, a department actually, a disinformation, psyop department of the satanic kingdom. Next, in February 2016, uh, uh, Pope Francis and Patriarch Kirill, who's basically you know, the top man in the Russian Orthodox Church, these people met in, in, in Havana and they signed some agreements and they've had several other meetings to agree on things. Why? Because they are going to merge together. The Roman Church, uh, the Roman Catholic Church is also planning to merge with Islam. Uh, when I, in 2003, when I was there, I noticed that the Muslims all had these beads and they moved them through your hand. And look to me, you know, I was raised Catholic, just like when you're praying the rosary, you move the beads, you know, through your hand. I was like, what is it? Oh, it's worry beads. Well, why do you have these? Oh, they're just promoting them in the mosque, you know, saying like, if you have stress, you know, you will do this. You know, you'll just roll these beads. They're totally conditioning them, setting them up to easily merge with Catholicism. They changed the Catholic catechism. Still, according to them, this is not according to God, according to them, Protestants, you know, you can know God in the world and you can even have a good life and maybe be blessed by God, but you can't enter heaven. You can forget about that. Only Catholics go to heaven, right? Well, they changed the catechism to say, Oh, and also the Muslims, because they also believe in the God of Abraham, can go to heaven. Well, if that's the standard, <laughs> Christians believe in the God of Abraham, hello? <laughs> so why are they disqualified? It's, it's because they only want people, they want to move people away from God to worship Lucifer, just, you know, in a different kind of a name, you know? Lord, you know, His Majesty, the Great One. You know, they'll just use some ambivalent kind of a term but they have defined it somewhere else as meaning Lucifer, the great architect of the Freemasons, is defined after the 30th degree as Lucifer, right? Ken Copeland also has gone up, you know, and whatever, bent the knee to the Pope in Rome. So this is, so what I'm showing you is they are planning, they're setting up now all these secret agreements between major influencers within the Christian community to go to Rome and to adapt the satanic agenda, which is this one world universal church. A lot of people are warning about that. This is, has been the focus of many, many dreams that the Holy Spirit has, has been showing me over the years. And it's something that is coming to a head right now. In Eastern Ukraine, where they are working, and again, I'm again, reiterating this fact and reemphasizing this fact, 
There is a Russian Orthodox army, men who are sworn to the Roman Orthodox Church have an army and they kill people and they kill Christian leaders. They go out, they close down every other religious type, Buddhists, mosques, Harry Krishnas, all closed down. In fact, Russia kicked out all of the Jehovah's Witnesses. They want everyone to go to the state-controlled Russian Orthodox Church because this is part of the satanic agenda. And I know some of you are thinking, well, the Russians, you know, Putin, he's really against the New World Order. No, he's not. They, this Again, it's all theater. They pretend that there's this divide because they want you to support one side or the other. You need to be supporting the truth. And you will only know the truth if you are praying to God, hearing from God, testing it, reading the scriptures daily, studying the scripture, and making sure that you're aligned with God in your heart. You need to set your desire that you don't want anything else but to be right with God, to hear from God. You will learn to easily reject all of the disinformation. The Holy Spirit has been showing me this disinformation is going to increase. It's so huge right now. And the Bible says don't believe something if you didn't see it. So people are believing a lot of things that are only coming to them by news, and this is largely disinformation. So now, <clears throat> the third thing is this message, and I've been hearing this from so many different places, which is to prepare. And uh, this list, I, I, I copy this down. Now, I highly recommend to you this vision that Ken Peters had many, many years ago. It's a Prophecy Club video. It's about two hours. But if you go to, I wrote this down for you. If you go to two hours and one minute, he starts about this. He starts through this list of what you need to do to prepare. Uh, and then, well, okay, at 2.07 and 10 seconds, he goes through uh, future events, things that he saw that are going to happen. And then at 2.16 and 54 seconds, he goes through this prepare list, which is right here. One, stay out of consumer debt. Two, leave the Babylon system. And he calls these Gad and Mini, which are gods of prosperity and destiny. Wow, how timely is that? How many prosperity preachers are out there now? How many preachers are out there saying like, you can't die if you haven't achieved your destiny? Really? Tell that to Moses. His destiny was to lead them into the promised land and he died without reaching it. So that's a false teaching. If you want to achieve your destiny, you better start following God, working hard for that objective, right? This is something God has been showing me through my life. This is not an off the cuff thought. Next, return to your first love. Who is Jesus? In the church, they want to tell you like, if you're divorced, you have to go back, return to your first love, which was your first wife. Return to your first love, which is Jesus. Not his word or prophecy or the gifts, but him. Wow, I, could, I can't say that more beautifully than Ken did. Uh, that was a quote from him. Next, love your neighbor. Avoid the spirit of intolerance and hatred. Don't let your love grow cold, right? That's what that is. Number five, don't run after signs or you will be deceived. Tear down idolatry now. Boom, wow. It's like he predicted what uh, they're going to be doing in Beth Bethel, in this NAR, the Arnauds, the Rick Joyners, the Todd Bentleys, signs and wonders. They have the class, signs and wonders, right? So people are going out being deceived into uh, basically what is a black Buddhism, right? S spirits of Kundalini, grave soaking, basically sorcery, witchcraft, satanic practices these things are, right? So don't go after the signs, right? The signs and wonders class at Bethel, right? Don't go after the signs, you will be deceived. Okay, six, begin to fast and pray. Sanctify yourselves now, don't be foolish virgins. So he explains this, this is a reference to the virgins who uh, had their lives full and the virgins who didn't have enough, right? So you need to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. You need to be so close with God that that's all that is in you. You'll need it when the night comes, right? Number seven, stop denying the Lord and share your faith every day. So Ken Peters kind of goes through this a little bit. Um, always have, always be ready with a testimony for Christ. Always be ready with a testimony for Christ. That is biblical. And be looking, share your faith every day. You know, even recently, I don't even speak Russian very well, but I was able to testify to a woman in the grocery store. Uh, and she was like, you know, we don't even have any, you know, we don't even have happiness here. She was telling me that she's Russian Orthodox. I told her, so you know, God doesn't want you to worship these icons and have these things. These are idols. And I was able to explain to her the history of the origin of the icons, which is the Greek gods became the Roman gods, became repackaged as the Catholico Church, right? The gods, <laughs> right? So I said something, I put that seed into her, and then the Holy Spirit prayed, uh, led me to pray that, that that would grow and that she would be set free. And I really believe that God has done something 
in that woman. It's not my words that set people free, it's God's words. So preach daily, share your faith daily. Uh, okay, maybe, Pr share your faith every time you have an opportunity. And I'm gonna say this, a video on the internet, it counts. You will reach, maybe if only 40 people watch your video, that's 40 people that you shared part of God's word. Just make sure that you're always leading people to God in your video. You've noticed that I've emphasized relationship with God several times already in this video. God wants you to do that. This is something the Holy Spirit told me years ago. Any teaching that does not lead people to Christ, to God, to God through Christ, any way you want to put it, uh, is a false teaching. Is a false teaching. And barely one in a hundred teachings you will hear in a church will lead people to God. So, show you. number eight, put your assets into gold and silver. So you need to have real physical assets. Over the last 20 years, uh, the rich people in the world have been buying up land, they've been buying up art, gold, things that will still have value no matter what the world denomination is. Whether it's the International Monetary Fund, like basket that's comprised of whatever I don't know, uh, euros and yen, and I don't know what other currency I don't, it is right now. So number nine, avoid more slick technology that gives away your personal power. If you watch uh, my video called um, uh, Bethel Exposed, uh, you in there I talk about part of that vision was that they were tracking Christians and that this is also happening within the church. And their goal is they want in, in all this tracking, they want information that will allow them to answer this question, which is, if he runs, where will he go? If he runs, where will he go? They anticipate a time when you might run for your life and they want to be able to track you down and get you. So that's why they're tracking you. This is so, so avoid the slick technology. So uh, in that dream, I was shot in my wrist, and I wear, boom, a Garmin watch, which is a uh, tracking. This has GPS, and it tracks me. Uh, anybody can access my data and know where I go, right? So if I want to go somewhere where I have a friend that I don't want them to know about, I better remove this watch. I better not even take any uh, strip track trackable currency with me, right? I better not take anything with an RFID card, a bank card, a debit card. I just better go with my basic self with pants and a shirt and some shoes and, you know, appropriate attire for a public place, but with no electronics, then I can go visit that friend. And then if I need to flee, that's the friend I can go to because I've never been tracked to that guy. So uh, you should watch that video, at, le at least that part. I, I, I went, the Holy Spirit showed me a lot about how they use algorithms and some other Number things. Number 10, don't fail to study God's word. This is something that the Holy Spirit has emphasized with me. I, I emphasized it earlier in this video. Uh, continue to study God's word. God said, you know, make, set up Bible schools, invite leaders to your home, uh, have men only Bible groups, women only Bible groups, but also, you know, emphasize relationship with God, but equally with studying the Word of God, right? So now, and then, uh, and this, I think this is so important, continually stand in the gap and repent for the sins of the fathers and for the sins of the nation. This is something that needs to be done. Uh, Daniel did it. Uh, it's something that you can also do. Continually stand in the gap. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for your community. Pray for the leaders in your area. This is something that's important, largely overlooked. People expect their pastor to serve them. But the pastor is the first one the enemy is going to attack. Because if he brings him down, he has a great chance of wounding the hearts and the faith of everyone in that congregation, especially in a congregation where people don't have personal relationship with God. So everyone you should be praying for, not just your pastor, but the pastors in every denomination within your town. Even the ones that we know are controlled, you know, at some headquarters in Chicago or in New York City somewhere by Satanists, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses. The Mormons have been taken over. Job's Witness created by the Russell family, a satanic bloodline. Uh, the, the Mormons, uh, Joseph Smith was just a con man. He set that up, but he was killed by Brigham Young and their followers, by the Freemasons, who then uh, took it over. So, and they introduced all the Freemasons' secret handshakes and uh, secret underwear, you know, things like this. So, uh, pray for those leaders also, that God would lead them, that their messages would be from God, that God would take them over that they would be blessed to know God because that can only help other people. So I just want to end with this one thing. And again, in my Bethel Exposed video, 
uh, something the Holy Spirit had been teaching me, and I've still seen it a few more times. I, in, this week, I was escaping from some church system, and uh, I noticed that they had stolen my bag again. And what the Holy Spirit has shown me, this symbolizes it. If you've had a dream recently that someone stole your wallet, someone stole your purse, someone stole your belongings, that this symbolizes this fear that this growing false religion is going to catch up some people that I have led to Christ at some time in my ministry, some time in my walk with God, in my service to God, in my desire that other people would know and love God and receive uh, freedom on Judgment Day, be totally forgiven by the blood of Christ. So, you know, this is a real fear. And what Jesus showed me in that video, in that, in that vision that I share in the video that they'll expose, is that they're actually not lost. They're in deception, but they cannot be lost. No one can snatch from God's hand. No one can snatch from Jesus what God has given him. If you belong to God, no one can snatch you. No matter how bad your philosophy gets, no matter how much they try to deceive you, you know, the, de the delusion will be so great that it would deceive even the elect if it were possible. But it's just not possible. It's not possible for you to be lost. It's not possible that the devil will snatch you out of God's hand. Whoever belongs to God belongs to God finito. That's it. You, there's no breaking that. There's no breaking it. Well, the only way is those who will take the mark of the beast and blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which to my understanding means someone is walking in the Spirit of God and someone else, I hope this never happens to anybody, walks up and says, that's, I, that's, that's the devil. That's not God. That's the devil. They said it to Jesus and he said, you know, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. So they came up right up to God's face and called him the devil, called him a demon, basically. And uh, that's the one thing that won't be forgiven. So this is why you'll see that I'm always really slow to judge something and only after a lot, a lot of prayer, right? It's one of the reasons why you really shouldn't judge, right? Not because of false quotes. Oh, don't judge me, don't. No, make a right judgment. You know, don't judge by appearances, but make a right judgment, which can only happen through the Holy Spirit, and which I feel, for me, I will only practice after long and careful prayer. And often when I come against somebody, I'm really coming against their teaching, but my heart is filled with love for the man because that's God's position toward them. So I think that uh, this was a pretty good video. Again, just a summary of the three things. Number one, the war you see in Ukraine is a war by the Satanists, and their objective is Israel. Their objective is the United States. That's where they are going. Ukraine is just a byway. It's just an avenue of aggression that they want to control in order to attack Israel. It is the beginning of a what they desire to be a world war. Again, I say they desire because that's their plan. That's the storyline they are writing and supporting. But God will change things if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves in prayer. And that's why I'm encouraging everyone so much lately, pray, 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 pray or be defeated.